Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching Ted Lasso. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching more of season three of Ted Lasso. Um, so far, um, not nearly as funny as the first season and not nearly as much heart as the second season. I, I know we're, we're, I'm going to, what is this, the fifth episode? So not even halfway through yet. So I feel like um, I, the, the Zava game and like the buildup of Zava and then like the, the, the winning with Zava uh, was just to propel the story forward. So then they could probably get to the heart of a lot of the issues. And I'm actually okay with that. Like, I, soccer is just merely like background when it comes to this show it's really about the characters it's about like not only the team but like brotherhood and and friendships and love and and and, and being open with your emotions and sharing that and and I, that's the reason why i love roy is because he seems like he has such a wall up but like he literally is incredibly emotionally intelligent. And what I actually liked the last episode is that I, maybe the last two episodes, is that I really thought Jamie was kind of like a dumb character, mostly because he didn't realize George Harrison had been dead for 20 years. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, like he, he calls out Coach Beard on, you know, he's like, no, I was being hypocritical, not ironic. And like Coach Beard is like, damn. <laughs> He's right. And even me, I was like, yeah. And then I was like, that doesn't make sense, but whatever. And then when Jamie made it make sense, I was like, ah, <laughs> yeah, I fell for it too. Uh, but what I, what I like is that he is becoming this multidimensional, multifaceted character. Um, he already was after midway through the first season. The second season really just opened up the floodgates to just allowing that guy into my heart and now like the way he's not impressed by zava and he's not even like really intimidated or jealous of zava he's just kind of like like irritated by him and it's almost like it, it's not even a mean irritation it's just like a like ugh kind of irritation and like that's kind of how we felt about jamie in the first season so uh, I think maybe he's learning something about himself there as well. And the fact that he's got Roy training him, I think, is fantastic. And he was ready to go that second day. You know, I think when, when Jamie focuses on something, he's unstoppable. I love that for us. I love that for him. I think Keely needs to fire Shandy. Um, definitely Shandy is not good for business. You don't need somebody just making those decisions all willy-nilly, especially changing the tagline of a dating app. Um, and making it to be the thing that it wasn't supposed to be. It's not about likes. It's not about clicks. It's not about downloads. It's about quality. And Shandy kind of tanked the quality of banter. Zorro. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Van Damme. Um, I don't like that he changed his name. Um, I mean, yeah, you could change your name if you want to be somebody different, but... I don't think there's anything wrong with Zorro, you know, and if anything, just change it to Zorro, <laughs> you know, like Van Damme. Okay. Um, I'd like to see Colin actually be open about having a boyfriend, if his boyfriend, in fact, wants to be open. I don't know if it's actually boyfriend, boyfriend, um, if it is just like this, you know, we hook up when I'm in town thing, but I feel like that that's his boyfriend. And I feel like his boyfriend was kind of like happily covering for him as well. So I don't even know if his boyfriend wants to be out. I, I don't, I don't know. I would love to see more of that because I like really like am interested in Colin and what makes Colin tick. And, and uh, I, I don't want to see him in that Lambo. <laughs> Ever since he said it's too much of a car for him to handle. And like we see him like almost get wrecked every time. I'm really worried he's going to get into a wreck. I'd hate if something happened to Colin. Sam with his restaurant and the uh, the chef, the cook. I feel like he knows her. I don't. I don't feel like it's a romantic thing. And and if it is, maybe it's just because I don't want it to be a romantic thing. Because I really do like him and Rebecca, even with the age difference. But what's funny is I was thinking to myself, I was bummed that Sassy didn't want to be in a relationship with Ted because he's a mess, and he is a mess. Like. Like, as warm and welcoming as Ted would be as a friend in my life for a relationship, I'd be like, oh boy, 
<laughs> you have things to deal with. And so she made the right call. She really did. Um, but what's interesting is that Rebecca made the same call, maybe not in the same words, but like she pretty much like told Sam, like, I can't do this. I am not ready for this. I'm not in the right place for this. And she's essentially saying, I'm a mess. And she re kind of reiterates that with, with Ted, kind of like, w we're both messes. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> that's our thing. <laughs> so I really like that they, like, kind of bring those things together and, and they have, like, the, the two stories that are similar, but they're very different at the same time. I don't know what's up with the psychic and the green matchbook. Um, her, Re Rebecca becoming a mom. Um, that might not be in the cards for her. And if it is, great. I just know that um, she's she's in her later 40s and successful pregnancies don't really happen that late. Uh, if it does, fantastic. Beard and Jane, they are the same type of crazy, and I don't think two crazies really need to go together. I, I don't I don't think um, I don't think that needs to happen. So we have to touch on the Keeley and Jack situation. That seemed like it was turning into something. I didn't mind it. There was a weird moment where Keeley was kind of like remembering like Jamie, but then like was almost kind of like, but then he's changed. He used to be this way, but then he changed. He used to be this way, but then he changed. Uh, I'm glad that uh, she's recognizing that, but I, I don't know if we need, we don't really need relationship repeats. I don't, I don't think. I feel like when you break up, like there's a reason and an incredible amount of change has to happen for that reason to go away. And I don't think that that's, that's the case because, well, I mean, Jamie has changed a lot. I don't know. I just don't know how you don't revert back to the past. Now we have to see how Zava's doing after the loss to uh, West Ham, which Rupert is flying high. Nate uh, was having some moments of guilt. Um, he was really, really close to just kind of being open and raw with Ted, and I really hope that that happens. I don't know why I still get so emotional over Nate. I just know that he's so broken, and he just needs, like, that, that, that one thing to have somebody believe in him when he's at his worst. Not his best, but at his worst, and I do think that that's Ted. I think Ted can provide him with, like, all of his heart and all of his soul and he can he can mend that boy and just help him and just I don't know I don't know I'm not ready to give up on Nate like there's times where I'm like well I officially hate Nate I can't stand Nate Nate this Nate that Nate this and I'm just like no he's so broken he's the most broken in the entire show and he's the one that needs the help so hopefully we can have conversations um where Nate and whether it's 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 Nate and Ted or Nate and Beard, I feel like Beard and Roy showing everyone that video, uh, that's not good for Nate. Um, but I, I, I do feel like, um, I, f I feel like Ted told Trent Krim, please don't say anything like, like Nate's going through a hard time or, you know, whatever it may be. I don't know. I feel like having Trent around, it's so funny because I have like 1% distrust for him because he's a reporter. And sometimes they latch onto something and then they just know that they just like can make headlines with it. And I don't feel like that's Trent, especially if he's writing a book. Um, I have to learn to trust Trent Krim. It's got that fabulous hair. We gotta let him. And I feel like the last episode is the first time I've saw I've seen Danny Rojas actually get angry and be angry. <laughs> I don't like it. I've seen him sad and I've seen him just ridiculously happy um, and, and in pain with shoes. But I haven't seen him mad and he was mad. So uh, them finding out what happened to the sign that it was Nate, uh, it fired him up, but not in the right way. They played angry. Beard and Roy did a bad thing. And Ted did not get angry at them, did not yell at them. And he's like, hey, you tried something new and it didn't work. And you could tell they actually wanted to be yelled at. And <laughs> Ted's like, no, not today. <laughs> I love that about Ted. Okay, guys, we're getting through this season. Uh, I'm going to be at the halfway point at the end of these episodes. Um, and, and I'm sad, but I'm also absolutely delighted. Anytime that I can go into this world and, and sit with these people for, you know, two hours, it's supposed to be a half hour show, but they're turning into 50 minutes a piece. Gulp. Um, but uh, anytime I get to go do that, it's a beautiful day. Okay, guys, let's get into it. Yeah, I might be all that you get. And with this 
loss, Richmond have now gone seven weeks without a victory. Damn, seven weeks? The talent is clearly on the field, Chris. Problem with this team might be in the dugout. Damn it! You think? I knew positive thinking was bullshit. Yeah, I think you may. Even with Zava, Richmond eat more ass than your mum. But oh. you gotta get off Twitter. This yeah. is a text from my father. <laughs> Our defense is in shambles. Our offense is stale. If the boys are gonna fucking stand around watching fucking Zava or fucking match, we should make them buy fucking tickets. Here you go. Some constructive criticism. Mm -hmm, a little bit. Mm. Bench Zava. I have one quick question for you. Are we ever gonna win another fucking match? Good for you, Rebecca. Well, I hear the concern in your voice <laughs> and its volume. And it's funny because we were just brainstorming in here. We're going to take that ship. We're going to turn around, go against the tide, point that baby right at the North Star and follow it all the way home. That's North Ted. This way. Well, okay. I'm pretty sure it's that way. That's what I meant, that way. No, it's right fucking that way. You know, I'm discombobulated. No, you're all wrong. It's that way. Shoot. I think. <laughs> Trent. He's enjoying himself a little too much. But yeah, if they're all just sitting around watching Zava, like, Zava needs to come up off the field. Don't put him out there for people to watch. Problem solved. They have to pay a lot of money for him and everyone's there to see him. That is beside the point. <laughs> uh, we actually went out on a few dates and then Rebecca dumped me out of nowhere. In this exact coffee shop. Not that I come here all the time hoping to run into you, because I don't. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? We're engaged. Oh, good. Ring a ding ding. <laughs> Wedding calling. <laughs> engaged. I like Jessica. My shite in naming armor. What? <laughs> I just... What did you say? What did you say? You just said shite in nining armor. Yeah, I, I meant to say knight in shining armor. Wait, no, you said shite in nining armor. You actually said those specific words. Uh huh. Go call that psychic girl. I'm worried that by adding more clients, that could mean less attention paid to the wonderful people we already represent. And then I, <laughs> I reminded Keely, if it does get to the point where we feel we're spreading ourselves thinly, then we'll hire more people. It's called growth. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara. Being a small boutique firm is exactly what sets you apart. I say, let's go for it. Mm. Hmm. No, it's wonderful. Because she believes in Keely or her? Don't worry, Barbara. It'll be great. Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. <sighs> Jesus, Barbara. Now that your little uh, cool girls meeting's done, just wanted to share the exciting news that I've started an app. It's like banter, but it's better and cooler and actually cares about helping people have sex with celebrities. Fire her, for the love of God. You are so passionate, but I have to let you go. But I know someone as brilliant as you will land on their feet. That's what you say when you fire Shandy. Yeah. It's called a compliment sandwich. You, you give someone bad news, but to soften the blow, you slap it between two delicious slices of compliments. Smart. You want to get some lunch? My my meeting just got pushed. Absolutely, yeah. My stomach started grumbling when you said compliment sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'm not against it. I like Jack. She's cute. Have a look at this. Ooh. Man, I don't know this Nate back a bad air like Anastasia. Oh, maybe she made a bet. Oh, and like she's all that. Yeah. Yes. But Nate does not have glasses and a ponytail hiding his beauty. No, I thought no. His transformation is going to be on the inside. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Zava, what do you think of Anastasia? I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah. My wife Christina is the only woman I see with clarity. Love that for him. My wife is sexy, but in a girl next door kind of way. Glasses, ponytail, she paints. Like the girl in she saw that? Yeah. Like what? It's a mover. Oh, I don't care about the uh, moving pictures. My favorite thing to watch is my wife. Fine by me. I used to get told I look like Rachel E. Cook back in the day. Man City. <laughs> I can't believe our white whale has the same name as a strip club where I danced in college. Oh. All right. Everything okay, too? Uh, Henry, Henry did the bullying? Got bullied at school this morning. 
if we leave right now and take the connecting flight through Paris, we can be in Kansas by noon, and that punk's house will be in ashes by 12.30. No, no. I love beard. Best thing you can do with bullies is ignore them. Mm -mm. Then you sneak into their house at 4 a.m., <laughs> yeah. which, statistically speaking, <laughs> is the hour people are least prepared to defend themselves. <laughs> As they sleep in their bed, you start to beat them. <laughs> Jesus, Roy. When they beg you to stop, you laugh loud as you can for as long as you can. Let's not do that, though. Hold off on anything like that until I connect with Michelle and just get the details, see what actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, fair enough. Especially if Henry was the one that was doing the bullying. The club is going in the wrong direction, and I fear that it has little to do with the quality of our players. We may have to consider, think about, thinking about, possibly, maybe, focusing... Coaching change? Changing the manager of our club. You want to fire Ted? At what point during any of that did it seem like something I wanted to do? Yeah. Leslie, this is too bleak for me at the moment, therefore I am granting myself permission to change the subject. Do you believe in psychics? That's... Oh, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Oh. Why doesn't that surprise me? Good. I mean, you're so whimsical. Mm. The universe is full of things we can't explain, Rebecca. Yep. Fingernails, what's that about? And psychics, <laughs> even if some of them are charlatans, <laughs> they can help us see something in ourselves that we can't quite see ourselves. I mean, she saw something. My friend Anastasia, she wants you to call her. She was surprised you didn't ask for her number at Bones and Honey. I mean, he's not rich all of a sudden, so I guess, like, that's kind of nice. Oh, um, hello. Uh, I'm glad that I've caught you. It's uh, Nathan Shelley. Uh, I really enjoyed meeting you the other night, and I was hoping that we could meet for another drink. Yeah, sorry, Mum, I'm just uh, practicing for the... Yeah. Aww. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, see, he's still that sweet guy. He just can become such a dick. Hey, Coach. Hello, Rebecca. Ted. No, I know, I know, I know. You are still feeling bad about yelling at me the other day, right? I can be a little bit psychic. <laughs> it's okay. No, yes, I, I shouldn't have bullied you. Uh, speaking with you too, Ted. <laughs> Look at that moment. <laughs> Did you tell Shandy to call Emma J at four in the morning whilst drunk on espresso martinis to mm. pitch her an idea for condoms for balls? What? Yeah, no, of course I didn't do that. Why? Oh, because she just fired us. Because of Shandy. Because of your friend. Oh, yeah, she's got to go. Shandy! Yeah? Can I speak with you, please? Can you give me 30 minutes? No, now. Please, can I watch? Barbara. <laughs> Barbara can be a bit much, but I still dig her vibe. <laughs> All right. Listen up, sheep. I was just let go because some people can't handle working with an innovator. Oh my God. So I'm starting my own PR firm to take this place down. Who's coming with me? Shocking, no one. I'll pay you double what you make in here. Who's coming with me? No one wants to work with you, sweetheart. Who's coming with me? I'll, I'll go with you. Not you, Dan. <laughs> Picky and choosy, eh? Kaylee, please let me stay. I just love it so much. We're a family. What a bunch of garbage. Bye, Shandy. I'll miss you never. Well, I'm not going to say it. No, but you're going to think it. Yes, often and forever. <laughs> Good for you, though, Keely. You knew you had to. Hello there, I'm Rebecca Wilton. I have an appointment with Dr. Wagner. Just fill this out and he'll be right with you. Oh, thank you so much. Take a seat. 
I don't think she's going to be able to have a baby. I don't think that that's what's going to happen. You know, I'm, I'm aware that what I'm about to ask, given my age, is a bit far-fetched. But I was just wondering if... If you're able to have children. Yes. That would be interesting. Yeah. I treat women your age and older all the time. We can run some tests and see what's possible. Sound good? Great. Yep. I hope she gets good news. Oh, I want the world for Rebecca. You know, I think we're really starting to tell our fortunes around. Right. Well, actually, Sam... Yeah, mass, no need. <laughs> we're playing like shit, and we all know it. Hey! Enough of that negative air. Eh? Yeah, city are great. Just stop acting like a bunch of little bunny rabbits. Let's fucking do this, yeah? Yeah! Good job, Zava. I am no prophet. Prophets believe in something. And I do not just believe, I know. In my heart, in my bones, in my well-defined delts, traps, and glutes. No, oh my God. That there is no opponent this team cannot conquer. I literally just said that. <laughs> you will win because you work together. Because together, you can achieve anything. Manchester City is going down! All right. <laughs> Poor Jamie. Okay, we gotta hear about this bullying thing. You know, I actually told Beard and Roy about what happened. Those fellas are ready to hop on a flight to Kansas and go full Wicked Witch of the West on the kid that bullied him. <laughs> no, Ted, um, Henry wasn't bullied. He was the bully. What? Yeah. Do you want to go see the Richmond match tonight? Either of you. Will it be as violent as last time? Probably not. Then no. <laughs> well, can I borrow your office to make some calls? Just don't look in my desk drawer. <laughs> don't. Well, now I want to look in the desk drawer. <laughs> I'm definitely going to look in those drawers. Slice them. Cut Mash them. I'm not playing. Share into your voice, please. Okay. Outclass them, Sam. Thank you, Outclass them, Sam. I love that. You connect with Henry yet? No. Oh, keep missing each other. Henry's a good kid, because you're his dad. Thank you, Coach. I needed to hear that. No, you needed to hear it. That's what I said. You did? We got a fucking problem. I don't think so. I think Zafa not being there is a good thing. Two questions. Um, are you ready to leave for the match? And do you smell that awful stench? Yes. And yes. Oh, my God. What was that? That's fucking weird. Oh, wow. Oh. oh, is that from Shandy? The lion has left. Enjoy the lamb, bitch. XOXO Shandy. Oh, my God. Uh, th th that is such an incredible shot that we didn't need to see. Oh, really, Nate? You think this is going to impress Jade? Hello, Jade. Um, Shelly. Uh, reservation for two. And you, miss? How can I help you? Oh. Oh, no, she, uh, we, uh, this is Anastasia. Uh, she is a very famous model. Uh, and we are on a date. Unimpressed. Hello. <laughs> I dig Jade. I dig her a lot. Oh, Nathan Jelly, the Wonder King. He had such it. Derek's a douche. Slap me round the face on my dream in the one and only Anastasia in my restaurant. I'm a huge fan of your face and body. Yeah. Why is the window table so important? It's not even a fancy restaurant. It's just like a regular restaurant. <laughs> he took a model just to a regular restaurant. <laughs> It's not very nice in here. Um, oh, but you, you, just wait till you try the food because the back of art is divine. So. Interesting. Mm. 
Well, that's not a nice thing to text her before the game. I have some bad news. Asava's not here. Nobody knows where he is. That fucking prick's not answering his phone. Neither is his agent, his manager, his publicist, his trainer, his acupuncturist, his acupressurist, his fecalist, his avocado whisperer. Fecalist avocado whisperer? Maybe he's dead. Fucking baby. Yikes. Oi, I could just drink, actually. You don't have anything, do you? No, sorry. Barbara's drawer. Shandy's work vodka finally comes in. Oh, early. nice. Where'd she hide that? On her desk. On her desk. <laughs> I cannot post this. The little dips look like a pile of vomit. People will see this and they will want to vomit. Quality woman there, Nate. Okay, look, I know it might not exactly be cool, but this place is important to me. Aww. This is where my family celebrated our birthdays, anniversaries. It's where we came after I got promoted as assistant coach at Richmond. Every important event in our lives has been spent here. I get why the window seat's important. You didn't want to date her anyway. Don't be somebody you're not, Nate. Just be you. Oh, goodness. Oh, Rebecca. Uh, sorry, Doctor. I'm I'm just in a little bit of a rut. That'd be great. Thank, thank you. Ah. Okay. Right, yes, n n that's, that's what I thought. Helen Keeley, she busy with Jack? We spent all evening picking up like 50 kilos of lamb kapoops. Most fun I've had in months. Oh. Oi. Thank you for all of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> now that's exactly what that's meant for. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to eat all that on my own. Unless you... You care to join me. No, no. Sure. Ah! After all, our baklava is divine. For some reason, whenever I'm trying to impress someone, I look sounding like my gran. <laughs> <laughs> hey, big guy. Oh, don't worry about that. It happens. It's good to see you, man. Look, I've been really wanting to talk to you about what happened at school the other day, you know? Dad, I messed up. Mm hmm Yeah, is Doug all right? I let him know that I was sorry by doing an apology rap in front of the whole class. Huh. Oh, well, that's something. Well, you know, a hip-hop song's a great way to get across a message, you know? Sure is. L just look at the hip-hop song, The Message. <laughs> is it true about Zava? I'm afraid so. <laughs> oh, Danny. You are not my followers. You are my believers. And so it, I have to tell you. <laughs> Roy. Zava has played his last match. If you put your energy into the things you truly love, the universe puts its thing back into you. You're welcome. Uplifting. Love you, Dad. I love you, too. Aww. I'm proud of you. I am too. He apologized for being a jerk to somebody via hip hop. That was a tough one tonight, okay? Man City has still got our number. That, that's all right. We're going to get another crack at him later in the season. Go practice tomorrow, yeah? That's right. Okay. Well, I'll see y'all on Monday. Oh, that's it? What about Zava? You, um, technically, he retired from the whole sport, which makes it feel a little less personal, yeah? Your girlfriend runs off with some dude and it turns out they're soulmates. Gina, what? No. <laughs> oh. Roy's history. All we need to win are the fellas in this room right now. And all you fellas need to do is believe it. Oh! oh, 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 oh. That's it, we do. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, you're not. Fact is, it's just a sign. Whoa! All right, guys, listen to me. Belief doesn't just happen because you hang something up on a wall. It comes from in here, you know, and up here, down here. Only problem is we all got so much junk floating through us, a lot of times we end up getting in our own way. You know, crap like envy or fear, shame. Now, you know what I want to mess around with? The belief that I matter, you know? Regardless of what I do or don't achieve, believing that things can get better, that I can get better, that we will get better. And look, yo, hey, if you can do that, if each of you can truly do that, can't nobody rip that apart. I love Ted. It's more at 4 a.m. Damn fucking drunk. Yes. You got this, Jamie. I'm glad it's not cheesy like he gave a big speech and they went out and won everything. Ain't nothing friendly about what happened out here. They call exhibition matches friendlies. Man, the sport drives me nuts. <laughs> God, this sounds depressing. Three little birds. It's a tattoo I have on my wrist that you can't see because my watch covers it. It's a fucking friendly. A friendly is a pretend match. This is a pretend conversation. You're a pretend <laughs> person with a pretend job. And I'm having a really <laughs> hard time pretending to give a shit. I love Roy. It's my first time in Amsterdam and I have a date with someone special in the red light district. Your wife. He's having a spicy night with his lady. Apparently, mm. tonight is the best Aurora Borealis ever. Like, it's the Aurora Borealis <laughs> in Norway. <laughs> Jack. And her plane are waiting for me at the airport right now. Subtle. Mm-hmm. Keely needs to be treated like a queen. I love it. Where is she going? Somewhere that believes they deserve her. Ooh. Well. Hey, there he is. Someone's in the mood. Yeah. Always. Actually. Yeah. What are you guys gonna do? I think only you can get these guys out of their pineapple percussions. Dull drums. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I'm about to say three words no coach ever says unless he dang well means it. You're all shit. No. Knowledge is power. True, but no. Live, laugh, love. Damn. Nope. Correct mm -hmm. answer is no curfew tonight. Ooh, in Amsterdam? I don't want to see your pretty faces until we get back on this bus. At what time, coach? 10 a.m., baby. You're the man, 10 a.m. <laughs> Smart move, coach. Yeah, well, you know, they need it. Not as bad as you do. Mmm, the truth. Damn. Tonight is going to be much, you know. <laughs> Not for you, sir! You know I'm fucking holiday from training. What about my stuff? Right. <laughs> Throw this away, please. <laughs> don't don't do that, Will. Run! <laughs> I love the relationship they have now. It's so wonderful. How about you, Will, with me tonight? That'd be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, great. Our first stop, the red light district. Oh. I know Will looks like a baby, but I think he said he's 24. He he, he can go down that way, right? <laughs> I've never been, but I want to go. Not just to the red light district. <laughs> Amsterdam. Oh, coach, this way. Oh, where are you going? <laughs> Roy's this not a is runner. This the world famous Skinny Brain! So we know the fucking sightseeing shit, you twat. Right, next stop. Amsterdam's thinnest house. 
gonna blow your mind like come on get moving lad so Woo! much energy <laughs> i'm actually just out having a stroll in amsterdam on my own completely unburdened i haven't even got my bag with me who's this guy i saw you walking just there and i thought i have to say something to this beautiful woman oh what what exactly hey, you... like... oh my god, oh, my god. <laughs> Oh! Oh god! Oh, did not really expect that! Sorry, uh, did you see where my phone went? Who cares? You're alive! Come on! It's gone! <laughs> I'm very laughing too. Can you yell, Oh! Uh, I, I like that! What, what is it that you wanted to tell me? You're walking on the bike lane. Oh my god! <laughs> The the signs, the bikes whizzing past you. This could be good. Yankee Doodle Burger Barn. An authentic American dining experience with American-sized portions. Well, I could definitely go for a little taste of home. It's not going to taste anything like home. Like, I need to do something to help me get me out of my head. Get punched in the face or uh, drink a couple of bottles of red wine and yell at my mom. What? <laughs> I want to try something new. <laughs> Come get inspired. Try new foods. I've been waiting for you to say those words for a very long time. Oh, well, you know, him and Jane have a unique lifestyle. And it's weird to see beard and jeans. So, what's the plan for the night then, Captain? I'm taking all the suggestions. For me, the best option for a night in Amsterdam is a train to Paris. <laughs> I told you I'm gonna say it again. I am not serious. Oh, you know, my, my father actually suggested we take a boat tour through the canal. We, we gotta go to a live sex show. Oh, oh very cultural. Oh. Very Yo, Trent. What should we do? Ooh. Oh, yeah, ask this guy. Well, the city has a wonderful museum culture. In fact, tonight is what's known as Museum Act, where they stay open for quite late. I would actually be down for that. Maybe it would just be easier if all of us stayed in and enjoyed a nice team movie night. <laughs> <laughs> or a pillow fight. Hey guys, I'm sorry, sorry. I think I need to bow out. Yeah, I ate some pickled herring earlier and now my stomach's bothering me. I cannot wait to hear all the dirty details. <laughs> Good luck, gents. I'll see you later. He's gonna meet up with his guy. It's actually surprisingly good water pressure for a boat. This is cute. Hello? Super cute. I want to fall into a river and be rescued by a handsome guy who lives on a boat. Hello? Aww. So is she going to like fall in love with this man and like obviously he has a daughter? And are they gonna like be together? Right down there is the bench from Fault in Our Stars. <laughs> oh my gosh, Roy, that is... <laughs> that was such a long time. It's a red light district, huh? That's right. Ah, uh, cool. Okay. Awesome. I thought he was going to meet his wife, but I don't think he'd bring Will with him. His name was Chet Baker. American, gifted trumpeter, unique singer, and a heroin addict. He was tortured by demons, but... They didn't stop him from making beautiful music. He's what got me into jazz in the first place. You know. oh, I love that. He passed away on this very spot. Oh, wow. Wow. Dunks are bad. Yes. Yeah. No, they are. Yeah. My man Kenneth, the bus driver, hooked me up a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Drugs are bad. Over to Coach Beard. I don't know, Coach. You know, I've always been more of a beer man or uh, Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids don't form literal new pathways in your brain. Is he doing mushroom tea? We're doing tea. Ted's favorite. That's like hiding poop inside a smoothie of barf. <laughs> I don't say this often enough because I generally uh, misapply, but trust me. I do. I trust Beard. Not his taste in women, but I trust Beard. This is how you change your mind. <clears throat> Mom, Teddy. I can't do it, Coach. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Ted. Ah. Oh, boy. 
you have any? But if you don't want to, don't. Okay, the idea of seeing a sex show is one that makes me more uncomfortable than aroused. Which is why I'm still in favor of, you know, a nice, simple movie night. Jan's admittedly inconvenient plan is an excellent second option. Uh, yeah? Yes? Yeah? Okay. By the time they figure it out, the night's gonna be over. Would you prefer to pay to watch two tired people have sex, or rather go to a party where perhaps you could get some yourself? No, no tired? Exhausted. And probably not the people you want to watch have sex either. We need to eat first, right? Oh, oh yes. yes. Definitely. Um, okay, what do you want to eat? Ramen. Shawarma. No way, we haven't eaten. I'm happy for you, Colin, but I think maybe your friends should know more about you. Trent Krim. A leopard print shoe? Saucy. Taking a shower on a stranger's boat is uncomfortable enough. And you shouldn't be worried that he's watching you through some peephole. She probably didn't even think about that. Feel free to change into one of these. Oh. What is it? He doesn't have like a dead wife, does he? It's not like her clothes, right? I'd be concerned that you've got a giant Tupperware box of women's clothing in your floating house. Yes, a little bit. No, it's my former partner. She was tall like you. Oh, I'm sorry. Did she pass away? Unfortunately. No. Oh. <laughs> and after dinner, I can give you a foot massage. Absolutely not. Okay, then. Fine. Uh, stand there with tired feet, completely sober. It does not affect me at all. <laughs> Fine. Come on, then. I'll, I'll have a bit. I like him. I don't know anything about him, but I like him. How do you know so much about here? It's Amsterdam. How do you not? Never been here in my life. What? Not one stag party. No. Not one international match. No. It's all no, Jamie. Hey, it all looks so fucking fake. You fake? Come on. Windmills. Fake. <laughs> I ain't even from here, and I'm offended. <laughs> Those are real, man. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. We need bikes. What? No! Eddie, you didn't drink any? You know, Coach, if you want to go... I'll see you in the morning. You really shouldn't leave him alone. Give her a sip. Just a try. Oh, he's going to a gay club. I thought maybe he's meeting up with his boy. You should stick around for the party later on. Thunderdong. Good vibes, good place to make friends. Thunderdong. Trent, hey. Uh, sorry, did you say Thunderdong? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I'm in the wrong place. My mistake, cheers. Oh, Colin. Colin? I already knew. I've known for months. I haven't said anything to anyone. I must have a good reason for that, mustn't I? Right. Aww. I like Trent and I'm glad that like he can talk to Colin about it. Come on, Daddy. <laughs> Keely. Oh. You don't drink it and go anywhere. Wait, is this some Dutch bloke singing She Believes in Me by Kenny Rogers? This Dutch bloke is the great Andre Hazes, and he's singing Zij Geloof to Mij, all right? Okay. And yes, the gambling man did it first. But... <laughs> Tot en ieder, mij ontdekt en zie. Singing into the whisk, I love it. Maybe on some special night. If my song's right, I'll find it feels right. It feels so right. Get away from me. Oh, come on. No, I don't want it. Mate, we take the bikes, find a windmill. No, I said no. Why the fuck not? I don't know how to ride a bike. 
Oh. <laughs> Thor Roy. Jamie, teach Roy how to ride a bike. When I went to Sunderland, my granddad told me he'd teach me how to ride when I came back for Christmas, and then he fucking died, and I haven't been on a bike since. Aww. Go on, Roy. For granddad. Mm. Fuck. <laughs> Look up and pedal. Oh! Straight back up. We're straight. <laughs> Put your feet on the pedal. <laughs> That's it. Good now pedal. Good now pedal. <laughs> they have so much fun filming this. Good lad. Pedal, 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 pedal. Pe no, pe 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 come on, come on, come on. Jeez. Uh, you stick out your foot to like stop yourself from falling. I love this. I love their friendship. Thank you for doing this, Will. One pilgrim alone is merely a zealot, but two pilgrims together, that's a pilgrimage. And that probably would have been Nate with him, too. I love Higgins. And the club brought in Dr. Sharon. And she helped me realize that I have an ache. An ache for both my lives to be my only life. <sighs> All I want is for when we win a match, to be able to kiss my fella the same way that guys get to kiss their girls. And I know we can't fix every ache inside of us, but I shouldn't have to pretend it's not there either. Absolutely. How are you doing, Ted, out in the world on some shroomy tea? God, I'd love to just be able to stare at Van Gogh's stone cold sober. They still haven't decided what to do. We should try Dutch food. the French Yes. How do we settle this lack of compromise? This deception! This rage! Good job, Isaac. Captain. Does it say pillow fight? When I was 14, my dad was trying to get back with my mum, and he was acting like some kind of fucking super dad or some shit. He said it was to watch a football match. After the game, he took me to the red light district for my real present. He, uh... He took me to lose my virginity ever to those ladies behind the windows. Must have been traumatizing. No, she loved it. <laughs> oh, for me, sorry, me. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I was a dick today too. I'm sorry. I think Keely's got a girlfriend. She does indeed. Let's go find us some women, will they? Yeah. Oh, did he go to the American place? American food? I always wonder how Europeans recreate American-style food, if it actually tastes the same or if it's just their version of it. Plenty of room tonight. Where would you like to sit? Windy City, Big Apple, or Hollywood? Oh, well, tell Mama that Roxy Hart is coming home. Dipshits. <laughs> <Yeah>, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> It's so cozy. And the food and the music. And it really is. Gazella. You keep saying that word, or are you just choking? Gazella. <laughs> that one? <laughs> yes, that one. There is no direct English translation, I think. 
Well, it can mean cozy. But you can also keep your mind gezellig. Hmm. You know, your heart, your soul. Even this right now here is... Gezellig. Exactly. So cute. And the Bulls drop into their triangle offense, creating constant movement between the players. Pyramid ain't nothing but a triangle. Mm. Actually, three triangles all leaning on each other. Howdy, Tad. Oh. Hey, so uh, how does this one look? Barbecue sauce. Why'd well, you bring me this one? It's the best one. That tea's working. Oh. Oh. Well, this is mighty strange. Uh huh. Hello, Ted. Oh, do you know where triangles come from, Ted? It's debated that the triangle was first defined by Pythagoras as any shape yes. with three sides and three corners. When a man called Tex Winter, an assistant coach for your Chicago Bulls, introduced his triangle offense, the central component of which was for a player to always have two available teammates to whom he could pass the ball. These three players formed the triangle. The second in handy. But that was never the only triangle on the court. For when the players moved, they created more and more triangles. Yes! I love that for you, Ted. What is that song? <laughs> Pillows ready? Yes! Yeah. Again! Yeah! Oh, Higgins! <laughs> I love it with the pillow fight! Oh, Everyone's just having a magical time in Amsterdam. <laughs> I can't believe Ted missed the pillow fight. <laughs> Vanilla vodka for Colin. I agree, though. A foot massage can change your life. Oh my god, he's still at it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Look at him. I really like this guy. Did we ever learn his name? Oh, Roy. <laughs> I simply adore Higgins. Last night. Did we? No. Thank you. Uh, uh, oh, you're welcome. Uh... Oh. Oh. I won't forget you. Yeah, you, you might. People get Alzheimer's. <laughs> oh, Herbrandt. Be hurt. And it was helemaal gezellig. <laughs> okay, doei. Doei. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, let me guess. Piggy Stardust. Rashers to rashers, oink to oinky. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, I shouldn't let you wander around out there all alone with a head full of tea. 
Uh, good thing I was a dud match. Yeah. Was that? I? I wasn't feeling anything, so I called Kenneth. He tried it. Dud match. Huh. Oh. You came up with it all on your own, Teddy. The way I see it, we've been playing too rigid, you know? Our guys need freedom. Go wherever they want to go. All their guts, their hearts. Yeah, as long as they remember to fill in the space that someone left behind. They gotta have one another's backs, that's for sure. You come up with this yourself? Yeah. Congrats. You should call it Total Football. Ooh, I like that. Which was invented right here in Holland in the 70s. Oh. You think we should try it? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, 12 unanswered texts, three unha ha gifts. We good? My phone is at the bottom of a canal. <laughs> hey, Will, how we looking? Uh, we're too short. Who's missing? Jamie and Roy. <laughs> Everything okay, boss? Everything's great. Don't worry. Bad thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. Singing, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. <laughs> Oh, he just cough up feathers? Oh, you will play in the bass. <laughs> I, I want to know if we're going to see Boatman again. Okay, absolutely love that Amsterdam episode so much. Um, like, I, I like when people, like, feel things and there's a lot of heart and it, like, makes me cry. And, you know, like, like Ted giving the speech at the end of the previous episode and you know the about the sign and and i think that that's great and like those are like the the uplifting moments that we need but like having like a fully uplifting episode where like you know just it seems like i don't want to say that like all good things happen but like it was just it ended on such a high note like literally like just and like i was saying like i have a tattoo i moved my watch but you could see that i got the three birds me and my two best friends of um the past 30 years have that tattoo and uh it just kind of reminds us that every little thing gonna be all right i'm so happy right now that that was in there it's just it's it's nice when um something intersects with my real life. And I, I, I love that. Now, I've never been to Amsterdam, but I, I definitely think that it would be a good time. Now, I definitely want to go, and I definitely want to go to a jazz club. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not keen on eating anything from any of the little shops or drinking anything from uh, uh, any... <laughs> a bus driver that gives you a little baggie and says here boil this no but i still i i, I feel like there might have been something in that tea i don't know because i i don't really foresee ted having a moment like what he did where he's like all of a sudden talking to god and about a uh, triangle defense and or is it offense offense defense either way he came up with an idea to change the way the team plays. And that's great because now they're going to play as a team. They're not going to just stand around staring at Zava. I'm glad Zava's not on the team anymore. I'm glad that he was only around for a short period of time because I really think that he was a great character and I kind of genuinely liked him. I, like 85% like liked him. There's definitely 15% where I was like, no, go, go, go. Um, but definitely he ruined the team dynamic and the the the, the kind of the ability to play with each other and know each other really well he ruined that because like they like Roy said it's just like buy everybody a ticket because they're just standing around watching Zava not sad to see him go but like I love the relationships that get built on this show and continue to build now of course anytime that we have Jamie and Roy together I did not expect Jamie to be teaching Roy how to ride a bike. Um, but I love their friendship. I love their dynamic. I don't know if it's a friendship. I feel like I want to call it a friendship, but like the bromance that's happening where, you know, like they were like sworn enemies and now like they help each other. The amount of times that we get a, a gruff like fuck from Roy when Jamie like helps him with something uh, is just delightful. I love it. I love their relationship. I love how Jamie has changed so much. I love how Roy has changed so much. Um, and the only person who hasn't really changed that much is Ted. 
he didn't really care that much about being good at soccer or knowing that much about soccer. It seemed like Coach Beard kind of really dove in and really wanted to know as much about it as possible and and learn everything about it so they could make the team better. And it didn't seem like Ted really did that. And this is like the first time I've seen Ted actually come up with like something coaching wise that's going to help the team. And uh, I, I, I'm excited to see it implemented. Uh, do I think it's going to work? I don't know. We're in the middle of the season. I don't think all of a sudden they're going to be um, winning a championship. I, I do hope that we see the thing that he implements start working and that, you know, like obviously having Nate be the person that came up with a lot of the good plays and, and got them a lot of wins, you know, him doing it on his own and not having Nate there and them succeeding, I think, without Zava, with with just Ted coaching, is fantastic. Especially after Higgins kind of bringing up, although he was trying to fight it every step of the way, but bringing up firing Ted. You know, that conversation has to be had if, like, there's no winning happening. Um, so I, I hope that he doesn't get fired. I hope that he, like, can resign and leave the team and go back to Kansas and be with his family. Now, a different relationship that I did not see, like, really coming, like, as, like, a bro relationship or a lean-on-me relationship is Trent Krim and Colin, and I love that because I, I feel like it's, a lot of people think that it's easy to come out to the world and, and you know, be that raw and, and bare with the world when it's really no one's business, um, but, you know, Colin wants his life to just exist like everybody else's does, where he can just, you know, celebrate with his loved one, just like anybody else would. And I want that for Colin. I really do. And the fact that he feels like he has to live two separate lives just sucks. I feel like maybe um, opening up to one person, which would be Trent, might start to get him to open up to the rest of the people in his life. You know what? The people around you that you see every day, they should know, you know, who you're dating. They should see you with that person. They should be able to see you happily in a relationship. Uh, the rest of the world is who sucks. Let's face it. And I love that Trent, you know, told him his story about coming out. And, like, I think he might actually still be with his wife and daughter. And maybe is still on the down low a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But I, I would hope that, like, Colin would be able to start living his life a little bit more out loud. If he felt like, you know, that would bring him happiness. And kind of make everything feel like it's not uh, separated. I want that for him. Now, with Keely and Jack, like, we know that they had a time together. Um, I don't, I, I, I like, like I said, I don't hate it. Um, good for them. Yeah. I'll have to see more about it, see how they are together. But definitely, uh, you know, it's when I'm talking about, like, Rebecca being a mess and I'm talking about Ted being a mess, Keely might still be a little bit of a mess herself, especially if she doesn't even want to talk about Roy and it still hurts. You know, she's definitely not ready to just launch into something else. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I love that we got to see Higgins play jazz. Oh my gosh, like him with the upright bass, no beard this time, not not coach beard, but no jazz beard, you know, doing his thing in a club where like, you know, his, his I don't wanna say idol, but like, you know, like he, he liked Chet Baker and you know, Chet Baker died there and he got to play bass in a jazz band, in a club where people applauded. It was wonderful. I absolutely adore Higgins so much. I am so happy that like, like these characters, like they're just like part of my family now. I just adore them. Uh, Rebecca, hooking up with a Dutch guy in a boat. We don't know his name. We don't know his name. Uh, I, I can't even think of a Dutch name to make a joke. Like just to be like, oh, his name's probably, uh, the only one that keeps coming to mind is Jan Maas. And I was like, no. <laughs> but like, I love that for her. Like she got to have like a normal type of relationship, like one that wasn't secretive because you should never have a secretive relationship. That's not healthy. And you shouldn't have one that's toxic like Rupert. And one that's kind of like a nothing burger, like with what's his face, John, whatever, that's engaged that the the shite and nining armor like couple or whatever uh no i i like this guy for her i like him a lot actually i was like he's intriguing and and uh wasn't like 
it wasn't too much. He didn't try to do something he shouldn't have. And then at the end when she's like, we didn't, did we? And he's like, no. And then he's like, we did. But I don't know what that means because he pulled the blank up, blanket up on her and like then they she fell asleep. So I don't know if that means that like they did something physical or maybe they... They had a night. They had a moment. They had something that's captured in time. Will we ever revisit it with him? I don't know. I did not expect her to fall into that canal. I did not expect that whatsoever, uh, but I'm not mad at it. And of course, anytime we get to hear Hannah sing, I'm thrilled. Did I think Kenny Rogers? No. Am I upset? Absolutely not. <laughs> but I am really interested to see like this thing with Nate, like him going out with a model and then ending the relationship, actually having a good conversation with Jade. I think like it would have been really easy for him to shit on the restaurant when the model was like, like it's, you know, like just dingy in here or whatever. And, and he's just like, oh, this is where we've come to celebrate everything. And like, like, this is a very special place to me. It's a very special place in my heart. And, you know, is very complimentary of the place. And now I know why the window seat is so important to him. But, like, the fact that kind of Jade recognized that he's not a complete asshat, I think, is wonderful. And I'm happy. I want so badly for, like, Nate to be happy and to be that person that we knew. And do I think Jade is the key? No. I think he's the key. He's got to realize that he's awesome and that he doesn't need a model and he doesn't need Rupert and he doesn't need a fancy car and he doesn't have to have all the credit. Because you know what? Like I was saying is that, like, him not getting credit for certain plays, that's what happens when you're an assistant coach. You know, like the coach gets all the credit, but he's also the one that gets all the shit. So, you know, like now Nate's in that position. And if, you know, West Ham loses, I hope he gets shit. I really do. And and it's just because it's part of the job. And maybe he'll have some compassion for Ted in the position that he was in and realize that it wasn't fair to think that way. I don't know. I just like I haven't given up on Nate and I don't plan on giving up on Nate. And I don't know why I cry every time I say that. Because I think it'd be really easy to just go on not liking Nate. And I'm I'm just, that's not me. It's not me. <laughs> I'm not going to let him change me. <laughs> I'm just always the optimist. I always try to look for the bright side and I always try to look for the good in people. Even people that have been complete dicks to me, I still try to look for the good in them somehow. It's not second chances. It's just realizing that, you know, People aren't inherently bad. They're just not. Some of them have been hurt and some of them are angry. And that's what you're seeing the majority of the time. But okay, guys, if you want to watch the full length reaction to these episodes, they will be available on my Patreon in a watch along format. So you will need your own copy because of copyright. Damn copyright. Anyway, remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Like really like like pillow fight, right? Like you you guys knew pillow fight was coming. Uh, I was actually going to get really upset if they didn't have a pillow fight. Like, really upset. Like, I was just like, that's the thing to do. You guys are wasting your night. Do the damn pillow fight. And uh, I, 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 I just, mm, the, 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 let's go to a sex show. I don't, I don't, I don't judge. I'm just saying that it's not like it's people that you want to watch have sex, right? But I definitely would have been down for uh, any restaurant that was not serving American food. I don't want to go to American places when I travel. I want to go to, like, local cuisine. I want to, like, taste what these people are eating. It's it's it's, ugh, it's so funny. But, I mean, Ted going there and having some barbecue sauce and, like, that was the trigger that, like, I don't know, I guess barbecue sauce is is his biscuit, you know? That's, that's what inspires him. It's what gave him a bullseye playing against Rupert, so barbecue sauce. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see ya.